thank you. Just tell thank me how you. tell me how it feels to uh, finally get that tournament championship. Yeah, that's that's been the elusive one, right? Um, we've been here. This is our fourth time here in four years. Uh, it eluded us in the first three, so incredible to be able to to get back to the game, but then to to you know get over the hump and and get that trophy. I'm I'm just um, it's an incredible accomplishment given, you know, how the season started, a lot of the, a lot of what we were kind of dealing with, um, with COVID and so much uncertainty around that, so many different things that took place. Um, and then to, to, to be able to win, what is it seven in a row? Is it seven uh, in a row? Eight, eight. So to go eight in a row or eight unbeaten. Um, just shows what these guys are, are about. Coach, we spoke about Yannick the other night. Again, tonight, he comes up big. And would you yeah. also comment on the uh, the save that he made that uh, VAR got involved in and uh, reaffirmed that it was a save? Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, obviously, I had no angle to evaluate whether that ball went over the line. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm happy it did. not Incredible save. That it had so much pace on it. The ball that was hit at him, um, he it changed directions, knuckled, and he, you know he kind of got his hands on it, bobbled it a little bit, and then luckily, just can't, you know he kept with it and was able to to keep it out. Um, there were a couple moments like that where where we had some emergency defending, uh, but you know the the. Um, those moments, we came up big. Yannick came up big. Uh, other players were there in key moments where maybe they got in for a moment to, to, and, and, and they had a little advantage and we were able to get a foot in. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's important in a final, especially as uh, when you're up one and maybe you're, um, you're under a little bit of pressure. We, made, we intervened, some, both Yannick and, and the back line and other players made, made big plays and big moments. Scott, you guys suffered so much heartbreak in this uh, in this tournament the last three years yeah. uh, to SMU. What does it mean to you, and especially to the guys who've been through that those trials and tribulations with you, to not just break through against the Mustangs in the semi, but yeah. to break through tonight? Yeah, I think you know we we're. we're learning always right like how, how how to win games and how how to um how to play in big games and i think you know we are we're growing as a team and i think that was a huge a huge moment the, the game against smu um smu had put us out of uh the tournament in the final uh smu had ended our season last year they're a top team we have so much respect for them but then for us to get by them for for us to to advance um, was really important. I think that brought us to a point today where we started with a lot of confidence uh, and, and, you know, clearly to, to, to be able to now win the regular season championship, but now to be able to add that playoff championship, it, it's, it's incredible. I think what it says about our group is incredible, that, that our, our players have <clears throat> incredible character, uh, to play two games within 48 hours and, 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 and to put in the effort that they did um, when they are, when they're gasping for air, uh, like just, just the, the will of this group and, uh, and these, these guys and those big moments was, was the difference. You mentioned it to win that regular season and the tournament in the same year. Coach Sahadak did that in 2013 with her team here in the American. She helped you kind of bring you in here. She says, you know, she was the one that recommended you. Did. How did, what, what does it mean? to bring that championship here to men's soccer to do both the regular season and the tournament title in the same year and, and do it at a place at UCF with the great history of soccer with women's and men's soccer. Yeah. I, I mean, for, for, for one, it's an, inc like th this league is so tough. There are so many good teams in this league to be able to, to win the regular season and the playoff championship is, it is so difficult. Um, and for us to be able to do that is a massive, a massive accomplishment and and you know i think when it comes to the women's program we like we 
we are so connected to them. Um, you know, I think, I think we have such a similar philosophy in terms of how we want to try to play. Um, our teams are really connected. So, you know, we, we, we're happy that we're adding to a legacy of soccer here, uh, men's and women's, um, you know, and ultimately that's, uh, that's what we wanted to do uh, when, when we were brought here is, is, is to keep up with them was, was the first thing, like, how can we, how can we get our program and, and keep up with them and the rest of UCF sports, right? To really, to really elevate what we were doing to, to the level of all these other teams, um, women's soccer, volleyball, the, the football team, men's and women's basketball, baseball, like there's so much success across all sports. I mean, uh, tennis is are now in the top 10 uh, softball is a top 20 team and they just had another massive win, I think against Florida. Um, but you just, you just look at what's happening here um, across all sports. And, and, and it's, it, it's, uh, it's awesome to be a part of it. It's, it's, we are excited to contribute to it. Um, and, uh, and we hope that now that our season continues, maybe we can, maybe we can go further. Maybe we can do more. Your team takes the early lead, quite a goal by Luca MVP. Are you sure he's a freshman? Yeah, he's, he's been unbelievable. Just his, uh, and, 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 you know, you, the thing you gotta, everyone has to remember is we didn't play soccer for like 15 months. And, and so it took a, a group of these guys, Luca included, Anderson, uh, just took them a little bit to, to get going. And then, and then those guys had never played with the other players that were here. Then they had to learn how, how our team works. And they're being coached by new coaches. So there's this, this short period that you get to adapt. And then, by the way, we've got to win soccer games because <laughs> they all count now, right? So just uh, it, it's incredible to see the, those guys – just really contribute now. Um, and, I, you know, I don't even think of, I don't think of them as freshmen or rookies or whatever you want to label them because you, you've, once you've played for a month, month and a half, half a season, whatever it is, you're not a rookie anymore. You've played in enough games. You've trained enough. Um, they're, they're such good players. They're so committed to, to UCF soccer. Um, yeah, his, his, his performance has, has been fantastic, uh, along with the other freshmen who have come in and made big contributions, but that they're not really freshmen anymore, are they? The, we talked about this in the preseason, Coach, and, and I'm interested to know what your perspective was on it. You know, this is, with this season having, you know, being so unusual, but you're playing only one game a week, and then for the first time this year, you guys have to play like you mentioned – two games in 48 hours. And it was yeah. particularly grueling with the extra time against, against SMU and the fact that you guys were going, both teams are going a million miles an hour the other night. Um, what was the plan tonight? Cause it looked like you guys kind of pulled the throttle back and how, how was grueling was this weekend for you and your staff and especially the players? Yeah. So kind of two, two things there. Um, it's impossible to be able to, to physically um, produce the level of effort required 48 hours after one match, especially a, a, a high level match, to then turn around and produce the same level or anything close to it 48 hours later. So uh, that's, that was, that's a huge challenge. Um, so for, for, for us, you know, we, we had, we knew we were going to have to, uh, play more players, right? Involve more players in, in, in this game. And, and some guys stepped up and played really, really well. And um, they've done so in training, right? They've won our trust in training. Some of the guys that came on uh, and, and now they had to play in a big game. So, you know, that, that, that was, that was tremendous from them. Um, but it is, it's, it's, it's really, really tough. And it's, it's a testament to how much they wanted it. You know, because by, by the time you get to that second half, yeah, there's some things tactically that, that, you, can, that you can do or do better, or, uh, but really, are you willing to work when, when everything um, in your body is telling you to stop? And our guys, our guys were able to do that. Uh, and we did, we did have to absorb a lot of pressure from Tulsa. I mean, credit to Tulsa, they had a good game plan. And, uh, 
and they, they forced us back into a defensive shape for a good period of that second half. But uh, we, we defended well. And, you know, ultimately we got, we got the result, which is what matters when you're playing in finals. Just talk about your staff, your coaching, your, your fellow staff. Oh, this yeah. was a, a fascinating year with so many challenges. You mentioned the long layoff. You're not playing in the fall. You're playing in the spring. It, the, the schedule is cut in half to conference only. You barely get an exhibition in. you got some players you're implementing. You're replacing yeah. a player who's one of the greats in the history of the program who's playing in the MLS right now. And you start out one and three. It didn't yeah. look good. You had players leave during the season injuries yeah. and here you are turned it around I know you've believed back then but do you re- I mean looking back now what you just pulled off here as a staff I mean just talk about your staff and what they've meant to you and how you all oh, were able to pull this off I no, I think I think that thank you for asking that question because there's I, I can't say enough about the assistant coaches our director of operations um our training our training room staff, our trainer. So Paul Souders and Jamie Davies uh, are, are the full-time assistant coaches. The amount of work that goes on behind the scenes, meeting with individual players, showing them video, cutting the video, clipping the video, you know, conversations around uh, their performance, conversations around the, you know, the team becoming more connected, uh, helping them to understand their own performance, helping them to understand you know, what, what does this loss mean, right? And how, how, how should we react to it? Like they're, they're, they're tireless in their devotion to, to these guys and the, and the student athletes. And, and they, they are working hours and hours and hours. And they're, you know, Jamie's got a new baby. Paul's got two young girls, you know, that like they are sacrificing so much time with their families to make sure that this group of of players has what they need. And um, Tessa, our, our trainer, exactly the same. You know, to get you, that, that what she has done in the last 48 hours to get players ready and onto that field to be able to play in a final after what some of them were dealing with is incredible. And she's done it all year, all year long and, and never complains, not even for a moment. None of these guys. They're, they're excited to do it because they're so committed, not just to the, to the winning, but to, to, to like elevating these guys and giving them every chance to be great. Um, our director of operations is, I mean, he's running around like crazy to make sure these guys are fed, that they have uh, everything they need, waters, Gatorade, um, providing everything so that they can recover, right? To make sure we're organized. Um, Chris Kanopka, goal, the goalkeeper coach who is working with, with Yannick, you know, that, that he, he is driving unbelievable distance every single day to, to help Yannick get better. And, and, and you see the job he's done to help Yannick continue to, in, to improve. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it, is, it is amazing what that group, that staff has done and, and, and what they're about, they're just so devoted to this group and they believe that this group can, can just get better and better and better. And, and we always believe that if we, if we work the way that we, that we want to work and the players will work um, the right way as well, which, which they did, they bought into that process. One and three, man, there's some people who are questioning and, and we, we just, we got that group together. That staff got that group together. And we said, nope, we, we, we need to believe in this. And this is how we're going to work. And we're going to get better. And, uh, and you see the, the end result of, of all of that work is now here we are able to enjoy this unbelievable moment. Your team has more soccer ahead of it. What though is the legacy of these seniors? Oh, yeah, we, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible, isn't it? When you, when you look at the, uh, the trophies, of course, are big, right? That's, that's the, how you're going to measure, the outside world is going to measure us based on our wins and losses and the trophy hall. Okay, and it's, it's really good. But when you look within the program, we are, we are measuring ourselves on different things as well. And it's what is the culture of this group? You know, how, what, what does it mean to be a UCF soccer player? 
and and what are the standards of that group and 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 how connected are we and do we believe in each other and and so um the outside world is going to see one thing and then the inside world is about the culture of, of this program and where this program started um and and now where it is and then where when they leave i think this is this will be the greatest testament is when they leave that these players that remain they they take that and and continue to try to elevate the program um i think that's the greatest testament to to any any group is that the the what what is what has happened before you continues after you move move on to the next step you got more soccer ahead you'll find out monday what's it going to be like what are you going to be looking for it's a unique format this year obviously with the reduced uh you know teams in the field being in yeah. Cary, north carolina one location i've said this league is one of the best in the country it had three bids two years ago i think it should get two bids this year i think the two teams on the field tonight should be in the tournament your thoughts on what to look for on Monday? Yeah, you, you, you know, the only thing I really know, because I, I generally look only about, you know, six inches in front of my nose, uh, I don't know how they're going to pick this. The only thing I know is, is 38, 36 teams, 36 teams, okay, from 48. So 75% field. I don't know the format. Uh, I know there's going to be a selection show Monday at noon. And that we're all going to North Carolina. Uh, I, I I would agree with you that this league is strong uh, enough where two teams should go. And I, and you had the number one, number two seed in the final, right? So two two teams. But but at the same time, there's no there's zero metrics that are objective that you can use to determine who goes. Right? RPI just throw it out the window. It no one's played across conferences where that statistic works um so i have no idea the 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 committee has got a really difficult job to do uh i have no idea how they're going to do it um but there's no objective metric to do it but i'm what is your happy we're we're you know we we knew we had to take care of our business to guarantee we were going so we're we're fortunate that 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 has happened that we get to continue our season what does your team need to do to make a deep run in this tournament? I think um, recover, right? To, to recover, to take a little break. Um, I, they, I, for the first time all year, I gave them the day after the game off. Uh, I think that cheer for that moment was as loud as when we won. Uh, so I think, I think they do need a break because they have, they have worked so hard for so long. Uh, and I think if they come back, I think they're going to come back unbelievably confident. And, uh, and when you win these, when you win championships, it, it has this impact on your play and the confidence of your play. So I think we'll, we'll get back to training. Uh, we'll, we'll get people that are carrying little injuries, um, healed and, and ready to go and be more at like their, their top level. Um, and then we'll continue the process that we followed the entire time, which is we'll know who the two teams are that we could potentially meet if we get a bye. If we don't get a bye, we'll know the team we're going to meet. We'll, we'll prepare for that team, but most importantly, we'll focus on ourselves, and we just want to keep getting better. We'll look at these games that happened this weekend. We'll say, okay, what went right, what did not go, what did not go according to plan, and then we'll just try to get better. And luckily, we have some time. I think we have enough time to do all those things. I'll end with this, Coach. How cold was that ice bath? You know, um, I'm willing to have that cold ice bath every single year if possible. Uh, it, was, it, was fr it was freezing cold. It was freezing cold. Uh, and I was a little bit concerned for all the electronics that happened to be uh, all around me. Uh, at, at the time, uh, but yeah, I'm 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 happy to have that ice bath anytime we we have this opportunity to to win a championship. So I I, I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Congrats, Coach. Thank Thanks you. again, Scott. Congratulations. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, we've got Yannick uh, next. One second here.
Hey guys. Hey Yannick, congratulations. Is it safe to say you've left it all out on that field again tonight? Um, yeah, I mean, for sure. Uh, it was two tough, really tough games. My body's tired. Everybody's bodies are tired. Um, and we all left everything on this field, definitely. What was it like? I saw with about, I think it was 20 seconds to go after that last rally. And I think someone from Tulsa put one into the side of the net. Um, you put your arms up into the air because you knew it was over. What did, Was that the moment that you finally felt like, oh, thank God, finally we've done it? Yeah, yeah, it was It was definitely a moment of uh, incredible joy and relief too. It's something, it's stressful. If you have a game like that, the other team uh, pushes as hard as they can. You try to hold against it as hard as you can. Um, and we've got, done that for a solid 10 minutes. Uh, everyone's, everyone's uh, yeah, fitness was, or not fitness, but everyone was getting tired. And I felt that. And um and it was really tough, and it was just relief that we finally did it. Um, it was a tough. It was tough two games, um, but we persevered, and it was really good. Where does this moment rank here in your career? You've won the regular season championships. You've gotten to the Sweet Sixteen, but to win two matches the way you did it, at home, to win that and that match you performed against SMU, which we talked about the other night, and to cap it off, to win that tournament title that elusive tournament title that you've been so close to finally get that how does it feel to have that title finally to go along with the regular season it's it's unbelievable honestly like i can't even i can't even describe the feeling yet it's uh something that will come in the next days the realization that it's finally here um and and i'm inc incredibly proud of the whole team uh especially the the young kids who stepped up and 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 did an incredible job out there um, everyone, everyone was bought in. Um, uh, I think I mentioned it uh, earlier on in the season. It, uh, it's really tough to create a team culture at the moment with all the COVID guidelines and everything going on. But I think uh, we are making the best out of it and uh, you see that. And uh, I'm just, I think it's, I think it's uh, pride that is the most, most, uh, I don't know, dominant feeling that I feel. Another shutout, but there was a pretty close moment there, the video <laughs> review. Take us through that from your perspective. You you had your body all over the place on that one. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I got uh, I got incredibly lucky on that one. Um, yeah, I didn't expect the shots to come. Um, I got my hands to it, but uh, lost, lost kind of my balance, fell backwards, and I had to drop the ball because if I fall backwards and I bring the ball with me, it's a goal. So... I dropped it in front of me, hoping that uh, maybe my defender will be the first one at the ball. Wasn't the case. Uh, so I tried to bring as much of my body in front of it and keep it out. And um, I don't, I honestly don't know if it was a goal or not. Um, if it was, um, I feel sorry for Tulsa, obviously, but at the same time, sometimes you got to create your own luck. And um, I mean, that's, that's how the game works sometimes. I also didn't know that, uh, that there was VAR, by the way. <laughs> That's new to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it came out as it was inconclusive because they didn't have enough camera angles. But my question for you is about you, know, you came to UCF from Germany. Um, did you have uh, you have friends and family back there right now who are watching your performance, not just tonight, but two nights ago? And were they reaching out to you saying, my God, what are you doing? You're like an acrobat out there. What, what <laughs> were some of the things that some of your folks back home were telling you? Um, yeah, I got a lot of... Uh very very uh very good nice words from my friends and family and uh even people i don't know um who were just in the stands and said hey incredible match and um i'm very grateful for all that support um it means a lot to me um honestly that's why i play sports and uh why why i try to go further is because i want to inspire people i want to i want to be um yeah i want to be loved and give love and um and that, that feels incredible. That honestly feels even better than just winning. You know, it, it's, it adds on top. It's a really good feeling. 
talk about this coaching staff, what they've meant to you, how they play. I've talked to Coach Calabrese. You, you talked about the goalkeeper coach that works with you and things like what, what does it mean to play for this staff and winning this championship and, and how they've made you better? Um, yeah, the coaching staff is incredible. Uh, they are the reason why I joined UCF. UCF didn't have a great record before, before uh, Scott took over. And, um, and they had a very, very good value proposition to me. I wanted to play out of the back. I wanted, I wanted a team who competes on the field, not by just uh, kick and rush, but by actually playing beautiful soccer. And I think they are doing an incredible job in making everyone on the team better. Um, and also with us, um, it was, it was, there was a tough moment um, where, where we didn't have a goalkeeper coach and it was kind of, um, okay, what are we doing? And, um, and Paul and Jamie stepped up and say, hey, we'll take the days you don't have a goalkeeper coach. And then uh, Chris Konopka obviously um, is working with us on the other days. And, um, and it's amazing. They're putting so much work in. They give us uh, so much confidence. And uh, I think they're, they're a big reason why, um, why we as goalkeepers get, get better. What's your legacy at UCF? My legacy? It's a good question. That's a big word. <laughs> it's a big word. I think my legacy um, is just to inspire the people around me, um, take on the young guys, um, achieve well academically, athletically, and in the community. And that's, that's all it is. That's how I was. That's how I am and um, how I will be in the future is uh, I want to get back, give back to the environment that gives me everything I need to be successful. You now look forward to the NCAA tournament, short and field, but you guys get the automatic bid. Um, we know all about the heartbreak last year in particular um, that you guys finally, but you guys finally broke through against SMU this year. How far do you think your team can go this season in the NCAAs? We'll take whatever comes, whoever comes. And, uh, and I know that with this team, we can, we can reach whatever we want. If we, if we, if we show up on the field, if we give it our everything, there is a uh, sky's the limit. You faced some early season adversity. We've talked about it before, the one and three start. Uh, uh, how do you reflect upon that now? And uh, how was it able to, uh, to inspire your team to turn around this season? Um, yeah, I, th I said it in the beginning, uh, when, I, when I came back from, from my uh, two week break, um, the team found itself. Uh, the new players uh, found their place. Got, got connections on the field. Coach mentioned it earlier too. It's, it's tough right now. Uh, there's it's been 15 months without, without a game. The, the kids have never played with us, with the, with the established team. And, uh, and they needed a couple of games to get into it. And we as a team needed the chemistry to build up. And we did that. And um, I think you see it on the field. Um, and it's just amazing to be part of this. And I'm incredibly thankful for that. Any more questions for Yannick? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Yannick. Congrats, Congratulations. Man. Congrats, Thanks, Yannick. Have well deserved. Night. All right. We've got uh, 10 minutes left, and we've got Luca for you. So uh, let's uh, rock and roll here. Got 10 minutes on the clock. Hey, guys. Hey there. Congratulations. Talk about this win tonight. What is the feeling and the emotion amongst the team? Oof, that's amazing. Where's when I got here, I, that's why I choose UCF because I, I, it's a team that likes to win, loves to win, and today was incredible. It was the first one, first of many, and it's amazing. Luca, tell us about that goal. That was a golazo of the highest order. Yeah, the goal was was amazing. Thank thanks for Yanni to to give me the assist, but. It was kind of lucky because it hits the the defen defensor player, but yeah, I'm happy for it. You've saved your best here for the end of the season. Talk about how you've grown over the course of this season. I mean, I, I, I never give up. I knew I knew that it was coming the most needed, and the guys were talking with me and like, "Let's go, let's let's do it. It's gonna come. It's gonna come." And now it's. I'm growing more and more as a striker, and I think it's it's good for the team, it's good for the coach, and to everyone. 
the team is one in three. What's the what's the move? What's the conversation? Were there doubts that creep in uh, with you and the rest of your teammates? I mean, that's why we work for. We want to be the best team. We that's why that's why we're here. We wanted to to be champion. And yeah, that's it. All right, good deal. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. Congrats, man. Thank you. Ken, what's the plan for Monday? Uh, hang on, let me stop this real quick.